Hey fellas, welcome to part three of Tamiya's 148 scale BF109 E3 build. Talking all fancy. <laughs> I'm done with this one. Done with it. To be honest with you, I was mentally done with this. Uh, after I put the decals on it, I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to play with this kit anymore. I'm done. I want to go home, <laughs> but I did do some oil work on it and uh, show you how I do that. And then I paint the exhaust stack or the exhaust, the exhaust stack, the, uh, the exhaust stains on it. Show you how I do those with the airbrush. And then that's about it. And then, uh, I show you the finished model. If you just want to see the finished model, I'll put a timestamp here. But, uh, other than that, yeah, done with it. It was a good little kit to get my mojo back. And uh, the other day, I had gotten in the mail. This is going to be my next video series. So this will be another extension of getting my mojo back and in the swing of things. And uh, hopefully, uh, when I get this one done, I'll be able to put it up for sale on eBay for somebody that wants, you know, one of my built models. And I also have the 148 scale P38F or G. I guess you can build either the F or the G, who knows. Uh, never built it, and I'm excited to build this one. Now, I, I have built a 30-second uh, scale P38, and I think that was a trumpeter kit. But I heard this to me, a kit is like the shiznit. So I will quit yapping, and uh, let's get on with the video. All right, fellas, uh, let's do some weathering. Now... <coughs> I just got up and uh, haven't had all my coffee yet. And it's raining outside. The sun's about ready to come out, though. So uh, I might be a little slow this morning. Now, I am, I am kind of tired of working on this model. But because I have OCD, I am going to finish it. And uh, I am doing the weathering part. So... I've got a flat coat on there with, uh, I used Tamiya, the Tamiya flat clear. And now I'm gonna, just gonna use some oil paint. So you can see a difference in the left wing as opposed to the right wing. Now I've already done some weathering on this side and now I'm gonna work on this side. And I'll show you how I do it. So I've got some uh, odorless mineral spirits here. I've got some sepia oil paint, sepia, and this is Aptalung 502. Uh, I've also got some buff and uh, faded white. So I'm going to create a little wash with the sepia. I've already got some on here. I put this on yesterday and you can still work with it. It's not like it takes a long time for oil paints to like, like harden up. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm creating this wash down here and I'm gonna go right along the rivet lines that I created with my Rosie the Riveter. Okay, okay. Now, because I didn't do any, any pre-shading, this is going to give me that, as you can see over here on this side, it's gonna give me that uh, uh, shaded uh, look like I had actually done pre-shading. Go down the panel lines here. Now I had put this on yesterday and uh, I should be able to touch it. It should be, should be fairly dry, but I want to be careful that, uh, that I don't like mess it up, but everything's fixable. <clears throat> Just about everything in model making is fixable in one way or another. Um, rarely do I throw a model away after, you know, if I make a mistake, um, pretty much everything's fixable. 
Now, some things I don't want to take the time to fix. <clears throat> I mean, that's a thing. But if you want to put in the time and effort, you can fix just about anything. This depends on whether or not you want to put in the time or effort. So this is going to act as not only like a panel line wash, and, but also to uh, give me some post shading. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And we're going to come in here and blend this all in. You know, uh, working with oil paints is something that I have not perfected yet. Not that I've perfected a whole lot. Uh, very few things in my life I've perfected. <laughs> Being a dumbass might be one of them. I perfected that. Um, but it can be... And, and I think the reason that I, I, I haven't felt really comfortable with oil paints is because by the time I get to this portion of the build... I'm ready to just to be done with it, like I said, and and <clears throat> and I don't, uh, you know, I just want to move on. So I don't think that I put the time and effort into learning it like I did, like using my airbrush and getting familiar with my airbrush. <clears throat> Not that I'm the uh, poster child for. Uh, Airbrush Weekly Magazine, but I think I'm pretty competent in using an airbrush. That's funny because I got, I don't know, what, how many airbrushes do I have over there? Uh, I got like 10 airbrushes. I sold a couple. And I only use like basically one or two. Now, <clears throat> it doesn't matter if they're all consistent. Um, in, in my experience, being a little inconsistent with uh, the richness of the color is what adds a little bit more realism to it. And if, if it's not, if that's not where you're going for, I mean, then you know, by all means, try to get it as consistent as possible. But it's your model; you do what you want. We all have different styles when it comes to to modeling, and uh, I've got a couple of books over there. One is the oh, I have to get it. I forgot what it's called. Some kind of aircraft modeling book by uh, who the heck is that by? It's really good though. Yeah. The uh, Daniel Zimmer Beatty, the FAQ book. This is uh, this is probably the best book for beginner modelers, right here. If I can't fit it in the screen, um, if you guys want, I can like do a review. I'm sure there's some out there, but as far as an all-encompassing book on model making, it is the best book that there is. And I can say that definitively. <laughs> I've got a couple other books <clears throat> that uh, a little bit more go a little bit more in depth. I've got that entire encyclopedia. It's got like five or six books with it, and and it's okay. Um, just uh, it's a little more advanced. So I'm going to come along here and do the same thing with this sepia color. And basically do a panel line wash and just hit areas. I'm not, you know, this is a flat coat, so it is going to stain it a little bit. Whether, um, if I, uh, more so than if I had a, left a gloss coat on here. So, but this is also going to enable me to blend it. 
a little better. Whereas if I had a, a, a really glossy gloss coat on here, what's gonna happen when I put this on here, I'm gonna wipe it away and it's just gonna stay in the panel lines. And I'm not gonna have any of those, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to blend it as well because it would just wipe away off that slick surface. With a with a flat coat on here, it allows it the uh, the oil paint to grip a little bit, so I can uh, I can play with the oil paint a little bit more and play with the colors and use it for shading. Okay, now right along the side of the fuselage here, uh, I've got those. Uh, I've got those those uh, rivet lines. So I'm going to come along and do those as well. Why not? And if if <clears throat> oh damn it, I broke this freaking thing off, son of a bitch. Well, that sucks. I know I was going to break that damn thing off. All right. So what we're going to do right, is we're going to carefully remove this and stow it away. And we'll come back to that later. <laughs> uh, I always break. See, <clears throat> a lot of times when I, when I uh, have something like that sticking out, the first thing I'll do is I'll just go ahead and cut it off because I know I'm going to break it off. So if I cut it off, I can, you know, during the build process, I can figure out a way to, to, uh, to uh, make sure I get that whatever detail it is. I can, I can, I can, uh, create it myself uh, rather than breaking it off and possibly losing the part and all that other nonsense so but yeah we finally broke it off towards the end easy to do make this wash a little bit darker. <clears throat> I like using uh, mineral spirits and oil paints for my washes. It's just, it seems like when I get washes out of a, uh, a bottle like the Ammo MIG stuff, that they just, the, the pigment is inconsistent. Sometimes it'll be really good, but most of the time, like, the pigment just kind of washes away. And, I don't know. With this, with the oil paint and mineral spirits, I make it myself. I make it any consistency that I want. Whether I want a thin wash or a, you know, a heavy wash. And I can mix and match any colors. So, yeah. Kind of like what I like doing. Mix it myself with the oil paints. That's the way to go, fellas. Mm. Now, for the staining, uh, from the for the exhaust staining, what I'm going to do is probably come back with an airbrush, and I'll show you how I do that. But just to give you an idea of what I'm doing here with the... Hopefully I didn't mess any of that up. Okay, so this should be dry. This, uh, at least it's probably not like wet. You don't want it wet, you don't want to do this when it's wet. So I've got a dry brush and it's fairly soft. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna start blending this in. And toning this down. See, I'm not being real. Cautious about it. Kind of haphazardly coming in here. So 
So I'm gonna see what I can blend in with my, my uh, brush. And then I can take a Q-tip and come in and refine it. Now if this was wet, it would just smear this all over, but since it's, it's dried on here, then uh, it's a little bit harder to remove, a lot harder to remove. So you wanna make sure it's dry. So I don't think I've shut the camera off since I put this on so you can judge for your self on how long it actually took. Come in here with a Q-tip. And then the Q-tip is a little bit more uh, aggressive than the, than the brush. The brush is not very aggressive at all. And again, there were no mineral spirits on it. Now, if I wanted to just wipe this away, I could uh, get some mineral spirits on a paper towel or this Q-tip, and I could wipe it all away if I wanted to start over. Come back with my brush. Okay, so that's what we, I may come in here and play with this a little bit more. Just make sure it doesn't, it looks natural instead of like I just half, half baked through it on there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a different brush and I'm gonna get some of this faded white on my brush. Not a whole lot. And then I will, uh, so I got some faded white on here and I'm just gonna get some of it off and I'm gonna come along and I can add a little bit of white in here to some of these panels, like they've been worn away or faded a little bit. Now, I'm not gonna do this to all the panels. I'm just gonna do it to a few. Now I can take my, the same brush that I blended with the, uh, the sepia color, and I'm just gonna come in here and blend this as well. Okay, and I get something that looks like that, okay. And then I will come in here and do the same thing to some of these other panels. Just to break it up. Add a little bit more interest. Maybe right around this thing here. Now I am not claiming this is the right way to do this. I am just showing you 
what you can if you do it this way what kind of results that you can you can get out of it so Okay, so there we go. I will probably work on that a little bit more, but it does add a little bit more interest than just um, the, 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 the airbrush paintwork that I had done. It adds a little bit more interest, and there we go. So I successfully broken off the, uh, the little antenna thing there and, uh, and done some weathering. So I'm going to go ahead and do this side. I'll, I'll do the fuselage the same way. Um, I'll do some oil work on the bottom. I spent a lot of time on this and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to airbrush. Once I get all that done and get it flat coated, I'll come back and I'll airbrush the exhaust stains and I'll show you how that's done and we should be finished up. So I have spent enough time on this stupid thing <laughs> as it is. So see you in a bit. Alrighty fellas, so now uh, that I've got all the weathering done and things kind of got, <laughs> got out of hand on the bottom, got a little dirtier than I wanted, but uh, oh well, it's okay. The uh, I also got the antenna, this little post for the antenna on there. I glued it back on with a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to paint, I'm going to airbrush on the exhaust stains. Now, I've already got the black down. Well, this is actually NATO black. So what I've done is I mixed up some NATO black really diluted with isopropyl alcohol. Now, the reason that I use isopropyl alcohol is because it dries really fast. If I were to use something like Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, it's not gonna dry as fast, I can't spray it as thin, it's gonna spider web on me. So what I like to use is just stuff I get from Walmart. This is 91% isopropyl alcohol. I have it in a um, little container I always keep that I labeled IPA with tape, <laughs> kinda neat. So we're gonna pour some. Just so you can see it, I'm gonna mix it in the color cup, just so you can see how diluted I have this. Now the thinner I get it, the gradually I'm going to be able to build this up in layers and the less chance of a mistake I'm going to make. So if I make a mistake at this point, it could be devastating for the model. So let's put some in here. And what I've got is a really dark brown mixture. It's basically a red brown mixed with some black that I like to use for rust colors. Maybe just a tad bit more. Because if I get it, it too way too thin, then I can still spider web even with the IPA. Okay? So I've got it about like that. Really, really thin. So I'm gonna throw this in my airbrush. So I've got the NATO black laid down already. Like I said, I like to repeat myself. Now, I've got my Awada HPCS. Now, this is a 3.35 millimeter nozzle, okay? Now, I'm going to try to do this on camera. Uh, hopefully, I don't screw it up too bad. For those of you that make YouTube videos, <laughs> doing this kind of like really tight work on camera is a lot more difficult. than just uh, doing it off camera. Okay, so I've got my PSI set at about uh, 13 PSI. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this, okay. And I'm gonna try to gradually build this brown up. All right. 
right. Now that was very subtle. But you can see how that brown just kind of creeps into that blue color. And it's very easy to go overboard, so I'm going to try to try to check myself before I wreck myself, yo. All right. Oh, that was stupid, wasn't it? All righty. So I'll do the same thing on this side. And it's kind of hard to get around here. And I'm just going to try to gradually build this up. Okay, just like that. Now that wasn't much. I didn't have to use hardly any at all. Um, and it just gives that little brown burnt tone to it over top of that NATO black. So that is how I do it. I think I will probably stop there. I think we'll be good with that, okay? And that's all there is to it, fellas. All right, I'm gonna get a flat coat on this, start ripping off my masking, and then I'll uh, throw some easy line. Well, I gotta, I gotta put the little antenna thing right here on the back of the window, and then I can throw my easy line on for an antenna, and we're gonna call this thing done.